Uh, Senator has outlined uh, very well many of the goals and objectives uh, of this Congress to tr try to provide the kind of quality and affordable health care that we must for America. I would just like to add just a few things. First of all, to think as you're writing this story, we're talking about 27 million businesses and 50 percent or more of the workforce. That's what we're here to talk about this morning. 27 million businesses. 20 million of those are self-employed individuals. 7 million are small businesses, but together they employ about 50 percent of the American workforce. They deserve our attention this morning. And our attention is focused on them because of several compelling reasons, but one of the statistics that jumps off the page to me, and I hope it does to you, is that in 1993, just 16 years ago, not that long ago, 61% of these businesses were able to have insurance. Today that number is down to 38%. And if we don't do something significant, in a few years, that number could be down to 15%. Now just think about that. Just think about just a few years ago, 61% of businesses were able to afford some kind of insurance. That number is now down to 38%. And if we don't do something, there are projections that it could go down to half of that. This is an unsustainable system. It must must be changed. And that is why this debate is so important and it's so important for us to be successful. Because failure here is not an option for two reasons. One, we are relying on these 27 million businesses to create more jobs, not less. To pay their people more, not less. Because if we haven't noticed, there's a recession going on in the country, and the only way you get out of it is by creating more jobs. This health care expense is sitting on our business community like a very wet, heavy, heavy blanket, suffocating their ability to grow and expand. It's basically as simple as that. So other people can talk about other aspects of it, but as the chairman of the Small Business Committee, I have to stay focused on thinking about the 50% of the workforce out there that is burdened substantially. We've got to make this lighter. We've got to give them more choice. We have to get off of their back and let them grow the businesses necessary and the jobs necessary to help us. The second point I want to make, one of the big issues in this debate is how to do that, and I want to say from my perspective, it's very important to me and to many of us to find a way to give these small business choices because that are affordable and to allow workers to be able to access these exchanges because while we have had insurance connected to employment for many years as a model, in my view, honoring the entrepreneurial spirit of America should allow people who are satisfied with their system, as Senator Durbin said, to keep it. Okay, if you're satisfied with what you have, if you can afford it, as Senator Durbin said, we want you to be able to keep it. But we also want small business to be able to move agilely with their insurance or small business owners or workers. So if they want to start their own business, they should be able to by accessing health insurance through some sort of exchange system. And those are the two things that I wanted to say on behalf of business. And the third is to be careful about how we find a way to pay for it. Limiting taxes to small businesses are important, limiting taxes. Uh, and if we do it right, we can perhaps um, use the savings within the system and keep those taxes to a minimum. Thank you. I think one of the takeaways from this morning is, and I think my colleagues would agree, that this is the very best time in the last 20 years for small businesses to actually get the coverage that they can afford and that they need to grow and expand. That's it. Best time in 20 years. Now, while there are different views of how that should be done, there is an absolute consensus, not just among the Democratic caucus, but among Republicans as well, 
that it is time, as this gentleman said, we're out of the time, you know, we're, we're past the time. Small businesses is the statistic that I gave you, I want to repeat it again. In 19 years ago, or 13 years ago, 68% had coverage. It's now down to 38. At the rate we're going, it'll be down to 15. And when you think about providing coverage, doesn't mean that employees are accepting coverage, okay? Just because an, a business gives the coverage as an option does not necessarily mean the employees are taking it. So I think if you really delve down into those numbers, you would find less. This is a, a disaster for America. This is. This is not what America wants. America wants when people go to work to have insurance. And that's not the system we have now. So whether we allow 25 or 50 or 100 or 200, you know, in terms of size of business to get into the exchange, the bottom line is one of the primary goals of health reform is to provide an affordable system for American business to be able to operate, grow, and expand. I'll say as the chair of the Small Business Committee, I think that's going to be very difficult. Uh, I won't say anything right now, and the leader should speak really as the leader, um, Senator Durbin, that anything's a deal breaker, but I think that's going to be very tough. It's because, um, you know, businesses that have revenues of 400000 or 350000 don't feel like they're, you know, they're millionaires. I mean, they don't, they don't feel rich. They, they feel like they're just hardworking Americans, and I think we have to be very careful. The other thing I could say as the chair of the Small Business Committee is we have to be as light on the mandates to business as possible, to try to be as light as possible. There may have to be some but to be as light as possible, flexible as possible, give them as many choices as possible, and allow the market to work, which I think is what Senator Lincoln uh, and Senator Merkley have suggested are excellent approaches.